Shiro hiatus, we are glad to have him back as he presents the High Performance Leadership Speech, the second speech from the High Performance Leadership Manual. And this will be the final speech, the final qualification he needed to complete the Advanced Leader Silver and therefore in his distinguished Toastmaster. <laughs> Please welcome Advanced Toastmaster Gold and Confident Leader, Tim Chastain. Progress can happen only when someone assumes a leadership role. When someone determines that there is a need, a problem, or an injustice, and takes action to fulfill that need, solve that problem, or correct the injustice. So says leadership guru Carl Albrecht, who wrote the High Performance Leadership Program for Toastmasters International. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters and guests, today I'll share with you a little bit about this program called HLP, HPL, I'm sorry, called HPL, and the project that I chose and the results of that project. Toastmasters helps people to improve their interpersonal skills so that they're more successful socially, economically, and in their personal satisfaction. Toastmasters is based on two tracks, communication and leadership. Most Toastmasters get involved in order to improve their speaking skills, and this is the way that it ought to be. But far too many fail to take advantage of the leadership development program. And this is a major lost opportunity. Leadership development begins right here in the club. When we become officers and work diligently to help our club become successful, we also develop leadership skills. And this helps us in the rest of our life, for the rest of our life, and Toastmasters gives us credit for it. Another level is when we become area governor or division governors or take some other district office. And when we do that, we develop additional leadership skills which flow over into the rest of our life for the rest of our life and Toastmasters gives us credit for it. A third component is the high performance leadership program. The HPL guide, it's a manual. You mean Toastmasters has a manual? <laughs> <laughs> the manual helps the Toastmaster to lead volunteers in some project of the Toastmasters on choosing. And this can be almost anything. It could be chartering a new club. It could be raising funds for the Red Cross it can even be a business project so long as you're leading volunteers and not employees that have no choice in whether or not they cooperate. <laughs> when you do that, you develop leadership skills that make that project a success. And then it goes into the rest of your life for the rest of your life and you get credit from Toastmasters International for your leadership track and for DTM. The project that I chose for this program was a very ambitious one. Your project doesn't need to be nearly so ambitious. In fact, had I known more about this program, I could have completed it years ago. <laughs> For example, I did help to found 
this club along with Jessica Schlink. And now there's a perfect program, a perfect project for this program. I also was area governor for a year. And that was a perfect program because I worked with volunteers from all the other clubs in the area to help make the area successful. But I didn't know at that time that I could do that. I thought I had to wait until almost the end of everything else that I did. But that's not true. You can do a high performance leadership program anytime in your Toastmasters career. When I began my program, I had just embraced a network marketing business. And in this business, there are several levels of achievement. And for the purposes of the program, I set goals to reach the sixth level by June the 30th of 2006. On February the 9th, 2005, in this very club, I gave my kickoff speech to begin that program. In fact, the person who evaluated that speech was Stephen Morgan. And Stephen, I thank you very much. You helped me a lot get started. <laughs> For the next few months, though, my spare time was devoted to Toastmasters pretty much. I was president of this club. I was area governor and parliamentarian for District 47. But as soon as my offices expired, I plunged into the business and the goals that I had set for the HPL program. And then Hurricane Katrina struck New Orleans. As it happened, my son and his girlfriend lived in New Orleans and had to abandon the city. So we asked them to come and stay with us, which they did for almost a year. The interruption to their lives and their careers were enormous. Their future was uncertain. We had no idea where they would go or when they would go to continue pursuing their life. So we tried to help them as much as possible to get through this period. And as a result of that, we lost a tremendous amount of control over our own environment. For example, there were numbers of times when one would take Marilyn's car off one direction, the other would take my truck off to the other direction, and we didn't have so much as a skateboard in the garage to go get groceries. <laughs> and this was all over our environment. We had no control over the computer, no control over the space, no control over our telephones, and on and on and on. And this tilted our situation so that it was not conducive to my business or to the program. In spite of all that, I almost reached level number three. Then came good news. My son received an offer to teach at Tulane University in New Orleans, and everybody was so excited. And when they left, my wife Marilyn and I rearranged furniture in the house, and uh, we put up some additional bookcases, and we're moving those around, and I noticed that I had a bad pain in my rib, and thought, I must have, I must have sprained my rib and moving those bookcases, and it got worse. In two weeks, I was really sick. Two more weeks, I was in the hospital with kidney failure, and the doctors told me I had a cancer called multiple myeloma. And when I returned from the hospital, I plunged again into the business, but there were times when I would be talking to a potential partner that was really interested, and then for days I would be hospitalized, unable to complete my conversations and discussions with that person. And I would go to meetings with my, my team, and I would be hunched over, I'd be sitting there hunched over my cane, barely able to lift my head to see the speaker. And after the last meeting I attended, I realized that my vision was bad. And I went to the doctor, 
and was told that my myeloma had produced a brain tumor. There was no reasonable way to continue. That was a year and a half ago. Only now have I been well enough to come and deliver this speech to complete the program. <laughs> now, I didn't reach my goal, so it wasn't perfectly successful, but that's okay with the program. You don't have to reach your goals, you just have to do the work, which I did thoroughly. However, I did learn quite a number of things about leadership and reinforced other things that I knew a little bit about, so that I took away tremendous leadership skills. And when my health returns to be more normal, I will pursue those goals with focus, enthusiasm, and the skills that I learned from the HPL program. I encourage you to take advantage of all of these levels, club officer, district officer, and HPL, because it will help you the rest of your life for the rest of your life. Remember that progress can only happen when someone takes on a leadership role. Mr. Toastmaster. Mr. Timer, one more minute, and everyone please